Hey guys, and welcome back to IGCSE Success. Wow, I know it's been a long time since I sat down and done a proper video, but I'm now on my half term break, finally. And of course, exams are just around the corner. So if you do have any questions, please do drop me an email at IGCSE Success1 at gmail.com or you can join the IGCSE Discord server and I will link that in the description box below. And there you'll be able to speak to people who have either sat their exams already or are in the same position as you and they are due to sit their exams this year or perhaps next year. Plus, I am so excited to announce my Boost and Secure private sessions coming soon. There's going to be the option for private one-to-one -one sessions and small group sessions as well. I'm going to be uh, creating a Google form very, very soon and I will be posting more information on the community tab within the next couple of days. Lastly, I just want to say, keep Keep fighting, keep revising. I know some of you probably feel like you've got the weight of the world on your shoulders. It will be over soon. And I just want to say best of luck for all those students who are sitting their exams in the May, June series. So in today's short video, I'm going to be taking you through a number of writing errors you really want to avoid making. As I'm sure you are aware, there are a number of questions from paper one where writing is assessed and writing accuracy is so, so important. It's even more important for paper two and even more important if you are doing the coursework component. So if you are looking to brush up on your writing skills, be sure to stick around for the whole video. And with all that being said, let's get straight to it. So the first thing I want to talk about is verb tense consistency. And I see this problem a lot with students who write narratives or descriptive pieces for paper two. Put simply, verb tense consistency refers to keeping the same tense throughout your piece. Take this example. The student starts chanting as he waved his results in the air. That's the student starts chanting as he waved his results in the air. Now, hopefully you can see that the verb tense is not consistent. We've got that verb starts, that present tense verb starts, and we've got that past tense verb waved. So the correct way of writing this sentence in the past would be the student started chanting as he waved his results in the air. And in the present, the student starts chanting as he waves his results in the air. Let's look at another example. During the exam, Sarah stands up and felt dizzy. That's during the exam, Sarah stands up and felt dizzy. Dizzy. So, of course, the correct way of writing this sentence in the past would be during the exam, Sarah stood up and felt dizzy. And of course, in the present, during the exam, Sarah stands up and feels dizzy. The simple rule you need to remember is do not change the verb tense if the time frame remains the same. However, do change the verb tense if the time frame is different. For example, John is very proud of his weight loss journey, which he worked very hard for. So the next error I want to look at is the use of commas. And don't worry, I'm not going to bore you with how to use a comma when not, well, I kind of am, but no, I'm just going to focus on something which I see a lot in my students' work, and that is omitting the comma when it's needed with complex sentences and using a comma to join up two independent clauses, otherwise known as a comma splice error. So hopefully by now we all know that a complex sentence consists of one independent clause and at least one dependent clause. And I guess these are just fancy terms that you don't really need to worry about, but you do need to know that an independent clause is a complete idea. It could stand alone as a sentence if it wanted to, and a dependent clause needs a little bit of help in order for it to be a complete idea. And the dependent clause within your complex sentence will start with what is referred to as a subordinate conjunction. Those words such as because, while, if, despite, however, and I will try and list them here. And I guess the reason why I am including this is not to teach you how to write complex sentences, but just to reinforce the importance of remembering your comma to separate the dependent clause from the independent clause. If you miss it out, it 
the world is not going to implode or explode, but Cambridge probably will circle said error. So for example, although I am not very studious, I still manage to get good grades. Of course, the first part is the dependent clause, although I am not very studious, because it cannot be a full sentence. It, it, it is not a complete idea. I still manage to get good grades, of course, is the independent clause because that could stand alone as a sentence if it wanted to. And of course, you've got the comma, which is often missed out to separate the dependent clause from the independent clause. However, just because a sentence does not have a comma does not mean it isn't a complex sentence. For example, you will definitely pass your English exam if you study. In this sentence, if is the subordinate conjunction and you study, of course, is not a complete idea. And here are some other complex sentences. Despite the cold weather, John still wanted to go to the beach. I studied hard for my exam after I finished school. When my exams are over, I will be able to relax. Which brings me nicely onto the next writing error I am going to look at. And of course, that is comma splicing. Probably the, the most frequent error I see when I mark my students' work. So put simply, and I'm pretty sure I've done at least two videos on this, um, a comma splice error is when we use a comma to separate two independent clauses. So two clauses which are complete ideas could be their own sentences if they wanted to. So for example, YouTube is great for revising. There are many educational channels available. Louise braved the storm she had nothing but a flimsy umbrella. I couldn't get out of bed this morning. I shouldn't have watched Netflix all night. In all three examples, commas have been used incorrectly. And as mentioned, this is something which I see a lot. And this is something which you will get penalized for. I mean, it's, it's not the end of the world, but stop comma splicing. And the easiest way to fix a comma splice error is to just use a full stop. However, we all know that Cambridge loves students who can use semicolons. So if your clauses have a close relationship and you want to show that close relationship, I would use a semicolon, but don't overdo them. And another way we can fix comma splice errors is to use what we call coordinating conjunctions, and that's just a fancy term for connective. And a useful acronym to remember is fanboys. And the last thing I want to look at is what is called a sentence fragment. And again, I see this a lot when I am marking narrative or descriptive coursework. Now, sentence fragments are pretty common. Um, as mentioned, I see it a lot in my students' work. They may look like a complete idea. They may be punctuated as a complete idea or, in sen or a sentence, but in actual fact, they are usually missing one of two things, and that is a subject or a main verb. Take the following examples. The teacher at school. The guard on duty. The man on the beach. And lastly, after they finished studying. Whilst all of these examples are punctuated to look like complete ideas or sentences, they are clearly missing something. Of course, the first example, the teacher at school, is missing a main verb. So you could easily fix this by the teacher at school works very hard. Works being the main verb, and that would be enough to complete the sentence and to eliminate that pesky sentence fragment error. The guard on duty, again, is missing its main verb. So I guess we could fix that by saying something along the lines of the guard on duty stood solemnly. The guard on duty stood solemnly. The man on the beach is also missing a verb. So we could fix that by saying something along the lines of the man on the beach left half an hour ago. That's the man on the beach left half an hour ago. And lastly, after they finish studying, this is the start of a complex sentence. So we could easily insert a comma. 
and we can add to that complex sentence by including an independent clause. So after they finish studying, they went to bed. And that's all for today, guys. I hope today's short video has been useful. Don't forget, my Boost and Secure classes are coming soon. If you have any questions about that, please do email me at igcsesuccess1 at gmail.com. Don't forget to join the IGCSE Success Discord server. That is in the description box below. And if you have any questions or feedback, as always, leave them in the comments below. And I will see you again very soon. Bye-bye.